I'm Maddie here with The Current, and we are sitting down with two members of the band TV Priest. Do you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Charlie. I, I sing. Cool. I'm Ed. I play the drums. Yeah, thank and you that, guys so much. Those for... are our jobs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those are your jobs. Uh, I'm, I'm Maddie. I'm, I'm on the microphone talking to you about it. Um, how is everything going for you guys in this, in this world right now? Uh, wow. I mean, yeah, I mean, as, <laughs> uh, as well as can be expected, I'm uh-huh. happy, I'm healthy, my family's okay, you know, Good. I've got somewhere to live, so it's all okay. I think peaks and troughs, you know? <laughs> yeah. Always, yeah. How about you, Ed? Yeah, same. My family's healthy, um, you know, I've still got a job, so mm-hmm. I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. that that kind of... Uh, you know, up and down the, the the roller coaster of emotion that we are riding. Yeah. How about oh, yeah. you? Are you okay, Maddie? There, you're fine. <laughs> I'm doing. I'm doing great. I have a great job that I love to do. Um, I'm healthy, and just thinking about how, like, if if you'd asked me that question a year ago, I don't think like saying my family's healthy would have been the first thing that came to mind. But that's something that is such a gift right now, and something that is so present in all of our minds. So yeah, glad to hear that you're yeah. both well. Thank um, you. Yeah, on the kind of news of like the current world, um, just jumping right into it. I know that there's a song on your upcoming album that comes out at the end of next week on February 5th mm-hmm. called Journal of a Plague Year um, that was written prior to March 2020. Mm-hmm. Is that is yeah. that the case? Yeah. Yes. How did that song yeah. kind of come to be? <laughs> Teaches us to muck around with history, I think, to be honest. Yeah, because, <laughs> I know. I almost wonder if it's your fault. Like, I... <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> it was, um, it's it's actually the title of a book by mm-hmm. by a guy called Defoe um, from the I think it's from the the seventeenth century, um, and it, it talks about uh, the plague in in London. Um, and mm-hmm. so we were, you know, at the time, you know, we wrote the record in kind of November, probably to kind of like February twenty nine, November twenty nineteen, February twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. So obviously, those things were kind of happening, probably in our subconscious. But I think. Alex, the guitarist, had, had, had read the book and um, we kind of, it was like this kind of like psychogeographical kind of exercise and being like, what would happen if this happens, you know, to our city again? At the time, mm. it felt like this kind of like, oh, you know, isn't that interesting? Mm. You know, it's this interesting thing from history. And then it came true mm-hmm. and it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think we all, I don't know about you, Ed, but I think we kind of, we kind of thought long and hard about whether or not to, I think, include it on the record. Um, I think, you know, we felt certainly that it was like in danger of maybe being a bit kind of glib for want of a Mm. better word, or a bit kind of, um, you know, we didn't want to make light of the situation because it is so horrendous and so terrifying. But, um, but, but I think, I think when we listened back to what it was kind of talking about in retrospect, which is kind of about the way that people then, certainly like the kind of powers that be dealt mm. with that situation and it was supposed to be like oh what would happen if it happened now and would they handle it as badly mm. um and they did <laughs> mm-hmm. um i think we kind of felt like it made sense to perhaps include it in terms of like having this kind of like historical equivalency i don't know i don't know if, mm-hmm. if that kind of if you, if, if you if you feel any different ed as well like, no no it's the same yeah it was a it was a weird one to sort of process. I think we, you mm-hmm. know, we loved the song before any of this happened. Anyway, mm-hmm. we were very happy with it. Came together quite easily, but yeah, sort of working out whether to actually release it to the world or not with everything that's going on. It was a bit, yeah. But I'm glad it's on the record. I think it fits quite well. I, I yeah. think it's a subject that it was probably best to not to avoid rather than mm-hmm. you know so yeah i think that's a good point as well like i think we maybe thought as well that sometimes you shouldn't necessarily be well i i, I don't know maybe i think you know maybe sometimes you shouldn't necessarily always be completely have a completely easy relationship with the art that you're making you know mm-hmm. i think sometimes mm-hmm. it's good to maybe feel a little bit um nervous about it or um unsure you know I think I'm I'm kind of one of those people that likes to see the the mistakes or the rough edges in in work so yeah I think but yeah it was I mean it teaches us for messing around with history really teaches us for thinking that it's clever to like take a book and be like let's write a song about that (laughs) 
Mm. Are there any maybe like lyrical moments in that song that you feel like you were really spot on about um, for for better or worse um, with how London has reacted to the past year? I suppose the normalize this kind of charm, because I suppose it kind of speaks of like, you get used to something and then it all changes again, you know, Mm -hmm. like that human condition of having to constantly kind of normalize situations and you do. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's ter- it's terrifying in a way that you do, you know, that you can sit mm-hmm. there and watch the news and see the amount of people that are ill or dying and kind of normalise it. It's terrifying mm-hmm. as this human kind of condition. But I suppose it's the brain's way of coping, I suppose, mm-hmm. when, when when you can't... That there's, it just seems inco- incomprehensible and inconceivable, I suppose. So I suppose that's the... Pro- that, for me, is probably the, the lyric that jumps out. Anything for you, Ed? I like the... Um... Uh, dear commuter, save right. thyself. There's a bit of a sort of <laughs> reference to everyone staying at home and not, you know, no longer working in an office. That's that's what stands out for me. I think. Yeah, I mean, if I could offer advice, like next record, please don't th- speculate on any <laughs> historical events. So we could have like a year off. Maybe that'd be really nice. But yeah, <laughs> we'll probably write a yeah, we'll... record and talk about fairies and trolls. And that'd things. be amazing. Yeah, that's that's safer. Safer. yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe speculate on like a perfect utopia next time and that'll come true yeah. and that'll be awesome <laughs> um yeah so you guys are a new band um relatively speaking and but you have known each other for a long time how did you guys go about from kind of being longtime friends to f- making a band together had you made music together before was that new <laughs> yeah for a long time mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah ter- yeah we've kind of been l- locked in this uh in this uh unhealthy relationship <laughs> 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 no i'm joking um mm-hmm. no uh yeah we i think you know i knew alex the guitarist when we i think i met him when i was like six years old mm-hmm. um and nick and ed i think i met you when we were about 12 or 13 or something Mm -hmm. Um, and you've probably been playing in bands since we were about 14 15 uh, with Mm -hmm. each other um kind of broadly this kind of music sometimes Mm -hmm. we'd be like you know let's try and sound like king crimson and then realize that we're not good enough to sound like Mm -hmm. that (laughs) and also we're 16 and we shouldn't be doing that that Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, but yeah so so yeah and then i think you know we're all a bit older now um we're kind of we're in our early 30s and I think the uh, you know again Ed correct me if you think I'm wrong but like I suppose we'd always kind of used music to kind of reaffirm our our friendship I think you know we'd, Mm -hmm. we'd kind of meet up sporadically maybe once or twice a year and jam and play and kind of just as a way of getting together and I think as we got older it kind of became um kind of became harder to dedicate time mm-hmm. to your friendship which sounds really stupid but you know like people are suddenly moved away from each other or working all the time or have other responsibilities or have partners and kids and all of that kind of stuff you know life just kind of happening to you mm-hmm. um and so I suppose the record really was was <laughs> was kind of a way I suppose between all of us of like carving out a bit of space for each other to be like let's 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 kind of just Mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know about you Ed but like sometimes it's hard I think when you're like when you're friends to like it was like it was like a space where we could kind of talk about stuff and Mm -hmm. be ourselves and just reconnect with each other as friends primarily I think and I think saying like oh let's make an album was like a kind of goal you know Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) it was like rather than being like let's just start this kind of amorphous kind of musical project that might mm-hmm. become a giant amoeba of time wasting <laughs> um you know well, yeah, like, let's 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 make a record and that means that we have to actually all get together and have to invest in a project and have to be friends with each other properly because <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. um, up until like the the sort of i don't know four or five years prior to that the only thing we'd really done together was uh played at people's weddings with <laughs> like friends <laughs> weddings with um a couple of other guys who who have been in bands with us before as well we we would yeah. just get asked to play at someone's <laughs> wedding and then that would be our excuse to get in a studio and play music together yeah yeah and we got so, really good at playing let's dance by david bow right? <laughs> <laughs> have to but ask like, kind of yeah. yeah thinking about your sound were you guys playing 
Weddings is like a post punk band. Were you playing just like <laughs> yeah. the most like grating version of Let's Dance yeah, yeah, yeah. of all time? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. The grand, the, none of the grandmas <laughs> wanted to dance. It was a nightmare. No, it was, <laughs> no we weren't quite as well. Uh, yeah, like um, yeah, it was not like that. No, we had a saxophone right. and a trombone. Come on, it was like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a bit more um, functiony. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we, I, I like to think we brought our own our own twist to proceedings, you know. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but definitely. yeah, definitely not a kind of intense <laughs> punk atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just imagining a first dance as like a mosh pit in the center of, of like a hotel floor, and that yeah, just kicking over the buffet. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe that's the kind of friends you have. I don't know. That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. I think a few of them would probably be down with that mm-hmm. some of them not so much <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it was um yeah so that was yeah so that was kind of how the, the mm-hmm. formation of the band happened I suppose that it was like it was pretty pure in a way I think mm-hmm. you know um which is nice and we really it was like you know kind of going and and and, and making it really for ourselves and really mm-hmm. to like just express ourselves and I think as well it was it came at a time in our lives where perhaps you know we, um, I don't know, I was going through a bit of a rocky patch. So mm-hmm. it was really, it was, it was, it was, it's been incredibly important for me just on a personal mental health level to, to have it. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I, yeah, I really like to think about a, a lot of your songs have like a, this focus on like societal <laughs> issues and like contemporary events. So it's really sweet to think about that. That's like, that was your outlet for sort of discussing these things among friends. And then it became something that you shared with the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the intention. I, I think mm-hmm. we all thought like, for, for me, and I think for Alex as well, who writes the lyrics uh, alongside mm-hmm. me as well. I think we, we got to this point where, um, I don't know. I was just sick of making art that like wasn't direct to an extent or, or, mm-hmm. or like, you know, like you would have these conversations with people at the pub, your friends at the pub or, or mm-hmm. on the phone or whatever. So why am I not saying that in the work that I'm making? Like, mm-hmm. what am I trying to kind of hide? And also like also kind of getting to grips and feeling comfortable with it kind of being and me being fallible, you know, mm-hmm. like, like these songs aren't supposed to be like you know like proclamations of like my flag on top of a mountain being like I'm right like Mm -hmm. probably half of them are all completely wrong (laughs) (laughs) you know but it's just I suppose it was just like a kind of human desire to just be honest and communicate honestly I suppose so I suppose it maybe comes from the same kind of place I suppose uh, you know uh, uh, that kind of feeling of like pure expression in the first instance anyway so Mm -hmm. um, but thanks for thanks for picking up on it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah no, absolutely my, my insane kind of rantings <laughs> i think yeah in in sort of previous incarnations of our band with mm. either the same the, the four of us or, or with other people we i think we tended to always overthink it slightly and mm-hmm. worry a bit too much about you know this lyric or what what the you know what it sounded like and stuff like that whereas this became you know it came a bit more naturally and I think mm-hmm. that showed through in, yeah. in the recording and yeah that was in our intention. Do you do you think that there's a reason why this sort of iteration of your band this record um, came more naturally to you guys? I think probably that honesty I think also mm-hmm. the fact that we have been playing in bands since we were like 15 16 you know mm-hmm. like we made the album in a very kind of intense period but mm-hmm. you don't have any of that kind of like creative uh language learning you know mm-hmm. with each other like we we all I think we all knew e- what each of us can kind of bring to to, to the music and I think it, it was a, I think we're all a bit older a bit wiser and and so it was oh, like when so. we did get into a room it we weren't kind of full I think we could bring the things that we always know that we've been good at but we mm-hmm. also know each other well enough to be like that is not a good thing that you do or <laughs> this is <laughs> yeah <laughs> or, or just or just I suppose just feel like more comfortable expressing yourself in more mm-hmm. honest ways because I would I would say I, I think I would struggle to do that with a group of people that I hadn't known for so long and I don't think it would have come together as quickly if if mm-hmm. it was within I think you know some bands do do that because it's you know it's the creative tension and it's the 
fact that lots of people are throwing in new ideas and there's this freshness but I think for us I think the familiarity of each other and knowing each other and and being able to get in a room and and just play like Mm -hmm. I think you can't kind of take that away from us you know that we have played with each other for so long that when we do play you, you you're kind of you're not you're not presenting anything other than just yourself and, mm-hmm. and and so I think that that is you know that's been a massive kind of plus for us in terms of I think as as a band like how our mm-hmm. working process is is pretty it's pretty quick so prior to um the world becoming where it's at right now it sounds like you guys just had one show what was kind of the energy like at that show or the circumstances surrounding it <laughs> I mean, it's shocking, isn't it? That like mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not, I don't wear that as a badge of honor. <laughs> <laughs> like, I re- yeah, well, yeah. Also, the other reason we formed the band is because we wanted to play lots of gigs and meet lots of mm. people. So that's kind of the sad thing about it. But yeah, I mean, the show, the show was we put it on ourselves. It was for our friends. There's probably about like maybe like eighty people there. Mm-hmm. Um, we play with our friends' bands and yeah you know we kind of like did the did all the sound ourselves and set everything up and it was really I think mainly just as an excuse to have a bit of a get together with like our mates mm-hmm. and also probably prove to like our partners and friends that we weren't just like going down the pub <laughs> 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 but like this was actually a thing that mm-hmm. we were doing so yeah uh, but the energy was do you know what I have never been more nervous in my entire life because yeah because it's just it was a group it was like all of our closest friends Mm -hmm. and playing to all of your closest friends is terrifying (laughs) (laughs) you know i i I don't know if you felt that ed i was yeah i I was like shaking before it was like (laughs) what's going on it's just like it's my wife but it's like what why am i so scared of playing but yeah because they're inevitably going to be like, oh, yeah, that was great. Well done. Well done. You, you can see in their eyes that they're like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The cold, dead stare of like, yeah. really enjoyed that, man. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go clubbing. Um, so, yeah. So, but it was great. It was, it felt really special in a way just to be mm. doing that and be performing it and be making music in a space and, and, and playing and, yeah, it was really special. It was it was kind of a shame that that's our one and only show. Like, yeah. Um, so, yeah. But I mean, I yeah, I just can't wait to play live again. <laughs> yeah. How has it been in the past year of like, especially? I feel like the kind of breed of music that you make that's so like visceral, and I feel like feeds off of live crowds really well. Have you rethought the way that you're making music at all um, in doing it without that live audience sort of feedback? Hmm, it's a good question. I don't know. Like, I think some of the new stuff that we're writing at the moment is maybe a bit more inward looking mm-hmm. and maybe shows that, you know, the first record was, I think, very much, you know, it has got a lot of things like anger and frustration and and, and hopefully humour and stuff like that. But it but it's it's quite an outward record. You know, it's, it's, it's projecting a lot of people mm-hmm. and kind of like, kind of, you know, anger is quite a useful instrument, I think, to, to kind mm-hmm. of, but um, I don't know. I think maybe, maybe this year has kind of forced us to be a bit more insular, a bit more inward looking, maybe explore some of the emotions that that kind of brings, you know, mm-hmm. melancholy, joy, sadness, rather than the stuff that's maybe kind of totally kind of, like you say, more visceral. So, mm-hmm. which I'm excited by, I think, I think that that, you know, I think I, as a songwriter, I'm interested in how you show all of those emotions and how mm-hmm. that's also a challenge. You know, anger, anger in a song can be, you know, and in a in a live performance space in a crowd space can be quite a kind of like, you know, it's quite an easy mm-hmm. communication tool in some ways. So I think I'm kind of interested in 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 all those other things as well, and perhaps how how that pushes me as a songwriter. Um, but also, it's been hard. Like you know, we're all kind of scattered about couple of the guys live in London me and Ed don't live in London so it's mm-hmm. it's it's been hard to kind of we're having to kind of adapt to working a bit more remotely I would say aren't we Ed yeah, um, yeah sure well I, I guess we've we've started doing a few uh like live performance videos mm-hmm. um obviously the current one um <laughs> and we've we've definitely been thinking about 
how to film it and how it would come across, you know, when you're watching at home. Obviously, we don't want to make it just look like a gig because mm-hmm. it's not a gig. So <laughs> Without an audience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, just us on a stage with no one in front of us. But <laughs> so, yeah, we've definitely sort of thought about how, I don't know, how to film it, definitely. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we've changed our music too much to adapt to that. But mm-hmm. um, one other thing I wanted to touch on that's a little bit separate, but um, Charlie, I know that you've kind of worked in the graphics sphere doing um, art for a lot of bands that I know current listeners probably are familiar with, like Fontaine's DC. Uh, how is that? sort of facet of your life and career impacted what the work you're doing as a band um well i think the main reason i i got into doing artwork for other bands and working with other people is is because (laughs) our band wasn't working and we gave up for a long time and Mm -hmm. i was always so kind of so i i think also like the visual world and drawing and painting and stuff is probably my first love as a kid but mm-hmm. it was really very much like a way of me making sure that I kind of stayed in a musical community, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was like, well, I'm not in a band anymore. So what are the things I can do to keep me kind of around people that are in bands or around music? Um, and yeah, and so I kind of started designing stuff for people and, and making stuff for people and ended up working at a record label and kind of d- doing that kind of stuff mm-hmm. for for five or six years really um (laughs) mainly to try and kind of fill the (laughs) fill the yeah the the, the, scratch the itch I think um so it's a really different way of work it's really different thing obviously you know when you're working with other people collaborating with other people like another band you know you're Mm. kind of in service to like uh, a kind of higher thing than yourself you know you've got to strip away your ego a little bit and kind of let right. their ideas and their feelings and their music and all of their work kind of kind of you're like a big like coffee percolator yeah <laughs> totally so you let kind of all their ideas go through you and you kind of it's about presenting things that maybe they haven't thought about or 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 talking just talking a lot and stuff like that mm-hmm. so you know so it's kind of different um to what we do as a band because this is pure self-expression you know mm-hmm. it's pure um I, I don't have to be accountable to anyone other than like ed and the other guys you know mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Definitely. and i suppose it was also quite difficult at the start like i never ever told any of these people or any of the people i work with that i was in a band ever mm-hmm. um it was like a guilty it was like a secret yeah. yeah it was it was mm-hmm. i think i don't know you don't want to be that guy that's just like hey man listen to this <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, totally like, it's not the kind of relationship that i think you have with people when you're working with mm-hmm. someone you know as an artist artist to artist but you're a visual artist and they're a musician it's mm-hmm. it, it's really different you know you're, you've mm-hmm. got different you're bringing different things to the table so i would never tell anyone that you know that like I was doing this stuff so it was kind of weird I kind of siphoned off working in a band as as this project just for me you know and me and my friends and and it's really got out of hand (laughs) (laughs) like oh Um, no no now we've got an album coming out on sub pop like what are we gonna do (laughs) like everyone's gonna hear it (laughs) I mean, I don't like that. Sounds like the worst no. kind of like the world's smallest violin. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Stuff, but it's it's like you know, yeah. I mean, it's just nothing that I ever countenanced. You know, it's nothing that I ever thought would happen. I thought you know we'd. Mm-hmm. I think our intention was like maybe we could press like two hundred vinyls or something. You know, and like mm-hmm. maybe fund it ourselves and have it to give to our friends and stuff. So it. But yeah, I mean, I think they feed into each other as well, though. Like, you know, I love making all the visual world and getting other people involved as well in that. And kind of, I think me and the boys love all of that stuff as well. So Mm -hmm. I feel lucky that I have that. I went away and kind of developed that skill set that like, you know, we can be really DIY and make Mm -hmm. all the artwork and do the posters and all that kind of stuff. You know, that's quite lucky. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Um, this has been TV Priest here on The Current. They have their debut full-length record, Uppers, coming out on February 5th from Sub Pop. Um, before we leave, Ed and Charlie, 
is what is like one big moment from the record that you are most excited for everyone to get to hear? Oh, that's a hard one. There's probably just uh, one, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ed, have you got anything? I think I got. I think I've got one. But you, I've got, you got one, one. But I, you might be saying the same thing. So you go first. <laughs> That'd be kind of first. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Saintless. Yeah, I was going to say final the track. Yeah, yeah. Final okay. track on the album. Pretty pleased with that. Yeah, Great. It's quite a kind of. Um, it's maybe slightly different. It acts as a bit of a kind of coda to the rest of the record. It's probably the most kind of. It's this big sprawling thing that grows, mm-hmm. but it's probably the most kind of, it's got a different tone to it. You know, it was written mm-hmm. about um, my wife and my my little boy um, and kind of mm-hmm. the time that we went through after my wife gave birth. It was kind of a bit tricky. Um, so it's probably a slightly more hopeful note on the record, I would say, that ends the record. But it's also got an amazing guitar part. <laughs> <laughs> awesome <laughs> which is good <laughs> cool. like a robert robert fripp kind of style uh ear splitter <laughs> amazing well i know i speak for myself as well as a lot of us and i'm super excited to hear the full record next week um thank you so, thank so you. much for taking the time to come come chat today no thank you so much it's yeah, uh, really you. means a lot and it's Great to talk to you from our from our <laughs> respective living room and bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, thank you again. This has been TV Priest here on The Current.